of the Hive, Chapter 6, Part 2. With her appearance taken care of, she departed the train car to find Ratchet waiting for her outside of the train car. Mother says I'm off duty for the next few days. He gave her a curious look. You wouldn't happen to be responsible for that, would you? She nervously scuffed the ground. Well, I wanted someone who could lend support in case things didn't go well. Ratchet's gaze softened. I doubt it'll come to that, but I'll always be here for you. Thanks, Ratchet. Before she could take off, a squad of royal guards entered the train yard. Twilight felt a brief warning broadcast spread throughout the local changelings. So, having the guard show up like this is unusual. She opened herself to her gathered kin. Let me handle this. Several changelings watched Twilight and Ratchet march up to the guard, while most of them went back to work with the local pony yard workers. Twilight wasn't sure if a smile with fangs would look friendly or not, so she opted for a neutral expression and a warm tone. Good morning, officers. How can I help you? We weren't expecting a shipment until this afternoon. We need to verify that none of you are from Chrysalis's swarm. Twilight remained cordial. How do you plan on doing that? More guards ponies arrived as the sergeant answered. Standard procedure. All of you line up and submit an illusion disruptor. If you stay gray, then you're free to enter town, as per the most recent decree by both princesses. Twilight fished out Celestia's seal. My kin have no objections to that, but I'm afraid I'm on business for the crown. I need to be going. She levitated Celestia's seal and the sergeant's brow arched. Evidently, it wasn't common for a changeling to possess one. The unicorn scrutinized the seal with every method that he knew, and each one came back clean. He didn't like it, but returned it without question. Very well. I'll still expect full cooperation from the rest of you. Twilight inclined her head. Of course, good sir. Alright guys, line up for a presentation. Let's not give them a reason to do more than a simple sweep. The forty-odd changelings responded instantly, and lined up on the west side of the train. By the time the guards had started their sweep, Twilight was already in the air and heading towards Carousel Boutique. Ponyville looks so different from the air. Fortunately, Rarity's business stood out almost as much as Sugar Cube Corner, and Twilight found it easily. Ratchet landed next to her near the front door. <sighs> Here goes nothing. The door chime rang up upon Twilight's entry, prompting a coy accented voice to call her from the back room. Just a minute! Ratchet stayed by Twilight's side while gazing at the multitude of dresses with an appraising eye. Such fascinating designs. The proprietor must have discovered a good aesthetics formula. He saw a rich blue dress with silky lace on the far end. I wonder how Twilight would look in that. Twilight checked to see that there were no other customers and dropped her disguise to wait out Rarity's arrival. <sighs> what do I say to her? Sorry I worried you? No, that's too... Her musings were interrupted by Rarity leaving the back room. So sorry about that, dear. I... Twilight grinned sheepishly while waving at her friend. Uh, hey, Rarity. I'm back. Twilight? Is that really you? Rarity whispered while racing over to see her friend up close. She ignored Ratchet and tried not to flinch at the purple mare's fangs, slitted eyes, and prominently butterfly-esque blood-red wings. Even with the princess's letters, I was beginning to think that I'd never see you again. She used her magic to quickly lock the door and flip the closed sign. Yes, Rarity, it's really me. Rarity threw her hooves around Twilight and tried to squeeze the life out of her in a silent hug, as it was the only way for her to maintain her composure. Twilight didn't need to hear any words, as the love she received from her friend was all that needed to be said. Twilight hugged her back, and both mares stayed that way for an entire minute. Ratchet was rather interested in the exchange. Strange. Rarity's mind is completely mute to me, and yet her care for her friend is obvious. No wonder Twilight uses physical displays of affection so much. Rarity eventually pulled away, much to the love-hungry Twilight's disappointments, to carefully wipe away a few tears. I'm so happy to see that you're alive and well, Twilight. Even if it cost you. She trailed off before her mouth could get her in trouble. I'm happy to see you too. How have things been since I left? Rarity averted her eyes from Twilight. Well, the town's been relatively quiet. Spike took over as town librarian. Applejack has been rather distant lately, throwing herself into work again. She perked up and faced her friend. But Rainbow Dash took it the hardest. Why don't you visit her while I round up the curls in the library? Uh, I really wanted to spend some one-on-one -on -one time, but I guess grouping up would be faster. Okay, Rarity, but you can't tell any pony else I'm here yet. Luna's coming over tomorrow to make a public declaration. Rarity scoffed and waved her hoof. Oh, don't worry, darling, my lips are sealed. She started pushing Twilight out of the door, who barely had enough time to don her disguise before being tossed out. Now hurry up, you know how pinky can be if she's stuck in one place for too long. Ratchet left the building after Rarity followed Twilight outside. See you soon, dear. Ratchet saw Twilight was currently unable to speak, and raised a hoof towards Rarity. Could you point out Rainbow Dash's home, just so we know where to look? Rarity gave him a slightly chilly look. It's the cloud home just south of the park. You can't miss it. 
His first reaction was to give thanks over the link, but he quickly remembered that she wasn't part of it. Thank you, Miss Rarity. Of course. She replied flatly, before cantering off. Ratchet stepped towards the perplexed Twilight. I was under the impression that she would have wanted to talk more. Twilight blinked as she regained her wits. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Maybe she just doesn't want to lose her composure. In that case, should I stay outside while you speak with Rainbow Dash? One thing stood out about Rainbow Dash and Twilight's memories, and that was the Pegasus's old friendship with Gilda. Uh, no, I, I don't think it'll come to that. He glanced around at the morning crowd of ponies making their way through the streets. Some of them had semi-regular contact with Kadista's hive by virtue of the regular shipments in and out of Ponyville, and were largely unfazed by the two changelings in front of Rarity's store. However, others gave the pair a wide berth, but otherwise tried to ignore them. To have so many minds close to you, it's a wonder how they get along so well. Twilight took to the air with Ratchet close behind. If I remember correctly, Rainbow Dash is a really late riser, so she still might be asleep. Should we visit one of your other friends then? Twilight spotted a cloud home quickly enough. Maybe... Oh, there's a light on, never mind. The pair alighted to the front steps. Never thought I'd be able to walk in clouds without a spell. Twilight mused as she knocked on the door. Several seconds passed with no response before she knocked a second and then third time. Twilight scrunched her face. Why won't she answer? Perhaps she fell asleep with the light on? Uh, she would do something like that. Twilight grumbled as she took flight and flew around the house until she found Rainbow's bedroom window. Sure enough, the lamp was on with the cyan pegasus sprawled out on her bed with a book covering her face. I knew it! She's wasting lamp oil leaving it on all night like this! The disguised changeling poked her head through the open window. Rainbow Dash? No answer. Rainbow Dash! The only response was a loud snore, prompting Twilight to shout even louder. Rainbow! Rainbow Dash jolted up at the noise, and Blairly looked up at the changeling hanging in her window. Uh, hi Rainbow. The cyan pony's brain finally registered that there was a changeling trying to enter her house, and the sleepy fog over her mind was burned away by an adrenaline rush. She leapt up on all fours, flaring her wings menacingly. Are you a thief or one of Chrysalis's assassins? Actually... Twilight wiggled inside before dropping her disguise. I'm here to turn your lamp off and say hi. Rainbow remembered Celestia's letter informing her of Twilight's new appearance and her arrival today. The Pegasus' snarl was replaced by a joyful smile. Twilight! She raced forward and grabbed the changeling into the air and squeezed her even harder than Rarity, and the flowing love felt less forced. Twilight warred with her desire to breathe and her hunger for more love. Eventually, Rainbow decided for her to let Twilight catch her breath, but the love kept flowing, although Rainbow's expression and tone was that of anger. Why didn't you let me come with you? I could have protected you from those jerks, and this whole thing wouldn't have happened! Twilight didn't remember the original reason, but she could guess. Sorry, Rainbow. It was dangerous, as I found out all too well. Well, I know that, but I... I should have tried harder to convince you to let me go. She couldn't bring herself to say it. She wrapped Twilight in a softer hug. I'm glad you're okay, Twilight. Before Twilight could reciprocate, Rainbow pulled away. You're still you, right? Twilight averted her gaze while rubbing her foreleg. Well, I still haven't recovered most of my memories, and I am a changeling now. Rainbow moved her head to look Twilight in the eyes. I don't care about the changeling bit, all I care about is that you're still you on the inside. She poked Twilight's nose for emphasis. Twilight saw the lamp in the corner of her eye and idly used her magic to shut it off. I think so. Rainbow heard her discarded book being closed and laid neatly on the nightstand. She grinned and crushed her friend again. That's the egghead I know. How does my knees clean up have to- Oh, forget it, I'm just glad that she accepts me. Rainbow let go and pulled Twilight to her hooves. I have to get a look at your new duds. Twilight watched as the pegasus poked and prodded the changeling's dark crimson wings, curved horn, fangs, and holes. You really don't care that I'm a changeling? Oh, I don't know. She said mockingly. Depends on how well you can fly. Twilight giggled. Well, I barely had my wings for two weeks, so I don't think I'm on your level, so to speak. Rainbow hovered in the air with a smug grin. Maybe in a decade or three, but seeing as you're still the same purple egg had I know, I wouldn't care if you were Hydra. Of course, that'd be kind of awesome too, so uh, yeah. Have you told the rest of the girls? Rarity was the closest to the train yard. She's running up everyone else, and we're all meeting at the library soon. Cool. Spike's been running the place since he left. He isn't half bad, but he can't get early copies of Daring Two books like you can, so I had to settle for something else. Really? Twilight arched an eyebrow and levitated a book lying on Rainbow Dash's nightstand over to her. Hey, that's private! Rainbow tried to grab the book as it flew over her head, but it nimbly dodged the Pegasus's flowing hooves. Slammed? Twilight was so confused by the title that Rainbow managed to snatch the book away and hide it under the bed. A brief moment later, Twilight's eyes lit up. Wait a second, that's a romance novel! She gave Rainbow Dash a coy grin. 
Some pony's been branching out, I see. Rainbow's cheeks burned bright crimson. It's just to tide me over, that's all, really. What is a romance novel? Asked Ratchet, still hovering by the window. Twilight balked. You don't know what romance is? She started sending him the basic concepts behind romance via the link. Rainbow looks between two changelings. Wait, where did he come from? Twilight waves Ratchet inside. This is Ratchet. He's my engineering guru. Egghead. Got it. Rainbow shook his hoof after he landed in front of her. Wait, why are you shorter than she is? Actually, why are you taller than me? Twilight took stock of her height for the first time now that Ratchet and Rainbow Dash were standing right next to each other. I thought that drones were shorter than ponies. Rainbow looked at Ratchet who was roughly the same height that she was. No, you're the tall one here. Almost as tall as Princess Luna. I, I never noticed. How did I not notice? Perhaps you've been too stressed out about how your friends would react. Ratchet offered. Yeah, that sounds like you all right. Remember the one it needed incident? Rainbow teased, and Twilight groaned. Oh, that's one memory I could have done without. Good times, good times. Or, well, depending on how you look at it. Anyways, let's get on to our memorable donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J Tinman, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Twinkie. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Color 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will, Chris, Dosbo, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.